morning. Welcome to From the Bars to the Bricks, Prison Ministries Incorporated. How are y'all doing this morning? It's your favorite fellow in the Rev, Dr. Kev here. Today, we are uh, talking about a little touchy subject. We're going to be talking about the Nashville school shooting, school massacre. Um, I uh, want to put any cautions out there. This uh, video might be graphic, talk about subjects that may not be appropriate for all ages. Uh, please take that in mind. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Definitely on this subject. I want to hear your thoughts. This is going to get kind of dicey and controversial. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as all of you are probably aware, if you're not aware, if you're not in the United States, not aware, there was a school shooting um, a week ago, Monday. And um, it would have been March the 27th in Nashville, Tennessee. Three elementary students and three teachers, staff, were killed. The gunman was also killed. The gunman was a trans female who had went to the school prior. Now, this is a Christian school, private Christian school. And... She went there targeting Christians. As a pastor, for one, that's disturbing. Um, anytime somebody feels the need to shoot people in a church setting or a religious setting of any sort or over religious disagreements, um, I don't get it. However, a couple things that frustrate me about this, and I don't usually get into politics because, well, for one, I'm a nonprofit. Uh, for another, it causes arguments a lot of times. Some people can't handle politics. Um, it's just a discussion. They want an argument, whatever, take it further. So, uh, you know, it just, I don't know. Let, let me first get to uh, our disgusting leader, um, Mr. Biden. This was his uh, reaction to this. Let me uh, <laughs> let me share my screen here. It, it's, um, mm, man, I uh, <laughs> telling you. Um, yeah, let me pull up this video. In this video, and uh, the use to this is purely and, and is only to illustrate the point. So, this is Biden. <clears throat> The one of his comments. President Biden, when he was at this school, people turned to you as a hate crime. My name is Joe Biden. Nashville school shooting. You believe that Christians were targeted? I mean, that in itself, there was a school shooting. Any reasonable human being, I would think, would show some level of concern. I've seen some of the worst, hardest, meanest dudes that will kill you and slit your throat and never lose a wink of sleep who cry 
over these school shootings when we were in prison. Anytime kids are hurt or killed, there's that extra level. Every life is important, but there's that extra level of compassion that should just be shown. And as a world leader, you know, people want to talk about Trump and this and that. Trump, I don't think any of our former presidents, any of them, would have had that reaction. It's not a joking matter. And let me scroll up here. Uh, so we'll get to the real just uh, disgusting part of it. Uh, oh, here we go, right here. Yeah, let me make sure we get it right there. We'll go a little early. So, again, Biden. I was in pain along, along with the Oh, goodness, of course, we're going to have network issues. That's uh, I uh, just you know what I mean. This is supposed to be the leader of the United States. First of all, if this was a target against Christians, it's a hate crime. I'm going to say it just like it is. I'm going to put it right out there, bluntly. Were this a Muslim school? People want to talk about white privilege, the this, the that. Here's the thing. Everybody's equal. There should be no privileges or whatsoever at all. But I'm telling you now, had that been a black Muslim school, that would immediately be a hate crime. So why? Because it's Christian and they're white. They don't qualify for hate crime status. It goes back to that. Talking about the racism uh, I did a while back that the what the white people that against you know the race against white people and it's okay and it's not. It is not hate or discrimination against anybody for a race, color, life choices, or whatever is not. If you're a Christian, it's really wrong because it's not biblical. <clears throat> As a pastor, it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Um, you know, these were innocent lives. And Three of them were lives of little children. School shootings are becoming too much of a norm in general, but in the United States, this is for some reason, we seem to be the only ones having this constant issue, and I don't understand it. Why have we become such a country of hate, such a country of division? Do we not remember what Abraham Lincoln said? Those who divided will fall. Okay, so if we divide, and we're not a nation that's held together, especially right now, in war times, we will fall. Not just that, human compassion. But the president's reaction to that, I just, that, that just even topped the cake even more. Why would... I mean, seriously, I, I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm not, well, in many ways, um, but man, if I'd have been parents of one of them kids, 
man. <laughs> yeah. But let us keep, though, as we're talking about this, let us remember the survivors. Let us remember all those kids that are traumatized. Because they watched their friend die, or their teachers, or a staff member, someone they knew, or they were just in the building, and the terror of hearing the shots, and then notifying what had happened, and I can't even imagine. I do want to say, and I'll probably do at least a little short on this just piece just on itself, because... You know, the cops get a lot of crap, especially from ex-cons. Usually it's known that us and the police, we're not buddies. We're not kicking it. We're usually on opposite sides. Can't so much completely say that anymore. You know, I still have, I guess, convict morals um, in a lot of ways. Uh, but in a lot of ways, you know, I'm a citizen now. I'm not a convict. I'm a citizen. And, you know, I want to give credit where credit's due because, man, those cops, especially the, the cop in the lead, man, um, this cop is just... Hold on, let me see if I can. Uh... Mm. The officer's name, but well, anyway, there was this the lead cop. This dude went in and was leading the whole time, never once hesitated, never showed fear. He had like, he must have had like amazing training and this dude needs to, um, he for real needs to be leading training for cops all over the world, especially in these crisis situations. His name is Officer Rex Engelbert. And this is uh, just crazy. Um, he, but I mean, from the moment they arrived through the whole thing, this man took complete charge. He got teams together. He said, hurry up, hurry up. He was on point on the doors and the searches. Um, he was on them guys. He was in control the whole time. And then when they realized the assailant was on the second floor, the shots that darted up, he was, dude was in the lead and so brave because you know if that officer wouldn't have responded like that nashville cops wouldn't have responded like that what if they had done like texas just sit back for half an hour and wait and see what happens how many other kids innocent children and teachers and stuff lives could have been lost you know it's just a uh, awesome job awesome job and, uh, you know, especially my hats off to Officer Rob Engelbert from an ex-con, bro. You, you and every, every, every single one of them officers, that man especially, but every one of them men and women <coughs> officers that went into that building, at the speed they did and to apprehend the suspect like they did so quickly. Um, I mean, the body cam footage from when that officer uh, pulls out his, um, let's see, oh gosh, it's three minutes and 14 seconds is the whole video 
and that's off his body cam footage at the moment. He's unzipping open the back of the cruiser, unzipping the assault rifle, you know, racking the bolt, talks to a teacher or somebody administrator, some sort of uh, with the school out front. Um, for a second, it was he's in passing, you know, you know, like stop and chat, but you know what I mean? Um, he immediately assessed and took control and all that. But all these officers, they need medals. They need raises. Not just a pat on the back now, man. They need to be really, really recognized. I think Mr. Biden owns those families of everybody involved, the victims, the survivors, the officers, and the officers' families all need to be apologized to. And they need to be recognized because that is just an extra heroic. I mean, that was the, the biggest uh, demonstration of bravery in a long time. That is what our police are supposed to do. A lot of times that training when you're putting them situations is hard. You see some of the other officers while they're there and they're doing their job, they're still kind of, you could tell they're a little bit of a panic mode and adrenaline. But this man never, never, never lost his composure. Um, they announced themselves everywhere, you know, they, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't, uh, can't say enough. Anyway, these officers, God bless every single last one of you. God bless all the survivors. Let us keep praying for the survivors, them officers, even those officers heroic, even the officers in the lead, and so heroic. And he killed the suspect. He shot the suspect and killed her. That in itself is still hard. Even though you're doing it to save a life, you're still taking a life. Taking a life, no matter what the circumstance, does take a toll on a person. So, that being said, let's keep all these people involved in our prayers for our nation, for our world. It's too much war, too much strife. We pay attention. The end's coming. It's in the Bible. If you read the Bible, everything's happening right now. It's in the Bible. It's coming. We need to be ready. Are you ready? This world's not ready. There's a lot of people in this world who's going to be very upset when Jesus comes back. It's a sad state. But it is something that hopefully we can change. There's a big decline in Christianity over the years. During the first part of COVID, Christianity just was rising and rising by the droves. By the droves, people were attending online services and stuff like that. And once the lockdown came, you know, it people just went the other way. You know what it reminded me of those guys that go into prison and you know, everybody says that people find God in prison. It's like, hey, cool, I'm in the right spot. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll pick up that Bible when they're coming in and they leave that Bible when they go out. They don't take it with them. Sometimes they'll take it with them and they never pull it out. They don't. They just completely forget God. And uh, they just want to lean on them in their times and they're down. It's kind of what it uh, reminded me of. But anyway, our world's in crisis. Love you guys. Keep your heads up. Hope everybody is definitely more blessed than stressed. 
And this has been the Rev. Dr. Kev. Till next time. I'm out.